Yes, um, time scales. If there were consensus on the abolitionist project, uh, I think we can be pretty confident that it could be carried to completion in a hundred years or so. In practice, for all sorts of reasons, primarily ethical, ideological reasons, this kind of time scale is wildly unlikely. Yes, of course, it's possible that I'm wildly optimistic. I would simply say that if suffering still exists in the living world, whether in humans or non-humans, or for that matter, artificial life forms, let's say 300 years from now, it won't be because the abolition of suffering is technically too difficult. It will be because, for whatever reason, we'll have chosen to preserve it. What reason we might choose to preserve involuntary suffering, I, I, I don't know. But no, I don't think uh, it's a fair charge. Optimism, at least on the technical level. Sociologically, yes, possibly, I don't know. Um, well, let's deal with this on a point-by-point -point basis. Um, yeah, in one sense, the future, it's unknown. The track record of futurology is extraordinarily poor. Yet at the same time, what is the likelihood that 50 or 100 years' time, if there is any such thing as invasive surgery, that surgery will be conducted without anaesthesia? Uh, it seems vanishingly unlikely. Uh, likewise, uh, when the technology exists to phase out the biology of suffering below hedonic zero, how likely is it that we will uh, choose not to use it? Um, once again, it's difficult to quantify, but nonetheless, I at least find it uh, almost incredible. And yeah, so it's rather ironic if one is a negative utilitarian, but uh, yeah, I, I have been accused of uh, excessive optimism. Um, um, I think most transhumanists, most futurists, do have some kind of master narrative, whether uh, it's life is the story of overcoming aging and the quest for immortality, or life is uh, a matter of overcoming stupidity and ignorance or perhaps closer to my own master narrative which is life is the story of overcoming uh, suffering uh, and yes perhaps at the back of my mind there is this uh, idea that life over the past 540 years has been a story of suffering on an unimaginable scale and projecting into the future this idea that first we will phase out suffering humans, then non-human animals, and then radiate th throughout the galaxy and the, uh, uh, the accessible cosmos. Um, Brian Tomasik, for example, uh, is worried that rather than if intelligent life, humans or our successors do radiate throughout the accessible cosmos, rather than spreading joy and bliss, instead we will uh, terraform uh, other inhabitable uh, worlds and actually create suffering elsewhere. Um, once again, I think we, need, we would need to be very, very uh, cautious before radiating, out, radiating outwards to show that we, we aren't actually going to cause more harm. Uh, in theory, uh, uh, yes, there is, I think, this, this uh, potential need to carry out cosmic rescue missions if uh, alien primordial ecosystems in which Darwinian life has evolved uh, are, are out there elsewhere in the galaxy. Uh, personally, I am skeptical this is the case. I think information bearing self-replicators insofar as they do arise are probably quite rare and the likelihood of primordial life evolving elsewhere in our galaxy is low but I could be wrong here uh, and until we know uh, more on the origins of life we won't know whether cosmic rescue missions are going to be in order or whether they're feasible.